Today I want to analyze for you a do-it-yourself retail company from Germany. And with that, welcome back to Investing for Generations, your channel for high-quality stock research for long-term value investor. And the company I want to analyze today is Hornbach Holding. Hornbach is, if you are from Europe or especially from Germany, you will know a big um, do-it-yourself retail company with mega stores where you can buy almost everything to do it yourself at home. So Hornbach is one of Europeans leading do-it-yourself retail groups is number five. I want to go through with you the whole Hornbach business. I want to go through the financial numbers. Will it compare it to King Fisher? And then I will tell you if I think Hornbach could be a good investment or not. So let's go. Hornbach holding right now is traded at 79 euro. And of course, when we look here at the chart, we see that they also was hidden very, very much by the pandemic situation last year. And then just recover to now 79 euro with a P ratio of 6.4, which seems very cheap and a forward dividend yield of 1.93%. Hornbach Holding have some different parts. The biggest part is the Hornbach Baumarkt AG. And then next to that, there is also Hornbach Immobilien, Hornbach Baustoff, Hornbach Management, and so on. And there are two public listed corporations. This is a Hornbach Holding. This is what I'm talking about today. And then the biggest part of this holding, the Hornbach Baumarkt AG, is also public traded. And Hornbach Holding have 161 do-it-yourself mega stores in Europe, mostly in Germany, but also around in Netherlands, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Austria, Slovakia, Czech Republic, and also in Romania. They have a long history. They were founded in 1877 and then they opened the first do-it-yourself store in 1968 and then just the history continue to the big holding we have now. And as I said before, with that, they are the fifth biggest do-it-yourself retail group in Europe behind Adeo, Kingfisher, Obi, Bauhaus, then we have Hornbach. And what I really like in every of my businesses, uh, also here with Hornbach, the CEO Albrecht Hornbach is still one out of the founder family. And this most of the time is a good sign for the company. And you can be sure that the company is in good hands there. And overall, the whole market of do it yourself is just growing and so also, um, Hornbach Group is growing. Here we have a view on the net sales over the last, let's say, four years, four or five years. And you see there is a big growth. And what's impressive with Hornbach, the whole sector growth, Hornbach grow even more, at least in Germany. This is for Germany. And also here you can see the difference between Hornbach and the whole sector. So. It seems like Hornbach have here a very good market position, a very growing position, uh, which of course is very good if you are an investor. But then of course you also have to look at the financial numbers of a company. And what I really like is to compare companies out of the same sector. And so I did an Excel sheet with Hornbach and King Fisher, the and then I just compared the most important financial numbers for me. And when we look at that, when we see that the PE ratio, and this is the forward PE ratio for 2021 um, of 7.4 is way lower than the price earnings ratio of Kingfisher with 12.8. And also the price book ratio with 0 0.95. Also here, Hornbach looks way cheaper. Dividend yield of Kingfisher is a little bit higher, um, but when we look at the revenue growth over the last five years and we see that Hornbach just grew faster. And on the other hand, the earnings per share grow faster for King Fisher. So overall, I would say both of them are kind of slow grower, steady, but slow as a long-term value investor. Somehow I like these slow growers 
when we look at the net margin, then like in all retail business, the net margins are very, very slim. When we look on the return on investment, then they are almost similar with 5.01 and 4.46. The return on equity is a little bit higher with Hornbach with 6.75, which is not super good, but it's fine. And therefore it also makes sense to compare it uh, in the same sector because then you get a feeling for these numbers because it's difficult to compare companies out of different sectors because just as the sectors are so different and the business and the sectors are so different. When we look at the debt equity ratio, then Kingfisher looks way more solid with 0.38 and Hornbach with 1.15 a little bit too high for me. Normally, if you follow me for a while, you know I like the debt equity ratio under one. 1. 1.15 is not a big issue, but it's not perfect. So this is one thing I don't like. But then, of course, when we look at the intrinsic value, and this is a important thing, of course, when you invest in a company, then I come to an intrinsic value for Hornbach with a discount rate or expected return of 12%, always keep that in mind, uh, of 102 euro to a current price of 79 euro. And so it seems like Hornbach is undervalued around 20%. And on the other hand, King Fisher, I calculated an intrinsic value of 3 euro 55 to a current price of 4 euro and 12. And so it seems like King Fisher is 16% overvalued. And so overall, after I looked into the business and I looked into these financial numbers, it really looked very good for me. And Hornbach seems very interesting as a investment for the long term. I really think about to put it in my European portfolio. You know, normally I talk here about my American, North American portfolio, but I also have a European portfolio. And just lately I made an update on that. I put the link here up on the screen and also down in the description below. And then you can see, then you have an insight to my real money European portfolio with all the holdings I have there. Um, and also the performance. So check this out if you're interested in that. And of course, also you can find all the information about my North American portfolio, which I'm talking the most here on this channel. And here you just have a short insight to this portfolio with all the holdings and the performance of every stock. And of course, also with the overall performance, and this looks quite good. North American portfolio, outperformed the S&P 500 since the 2nd of December 2019 by exactly 34% right now. And if you're interested in that, and if you like the whole idea of the long-term value investment, then just subscribe to my channel, follow me on my road as a long-term value investor, like and share this video, and then we will see you the next time with another analysis of another stock. See you then. Take care. Bye-bye.